the thrift store the other day and I found some items that we are going to completely transform into some beautiful pieces of home decor. One of my favorite places to rummage through my thrift store is the dish aisle. It's like a treasure hunt. I find so many good things there. Well, this week I found this beautiful white milk glass bowl with a gold rim. It has some really nice raised detail on the bottom of the bowl. It was in great condition and it was only a $3.99. I'm going to be honest with you, I have plenty of bowls. It's true. So what we're going to do with this bowl is we're going to transform it into a candle. Yes, a candle. And it's so easy to do. I already have my container, which is going to be my bowl. So now I just need the wax. So I headed over to the Dollar Tree. They have plain white candles. I picked up three of them. I'm using white wax for my candle, but they have a variety of different colored wax candles, so you can pick a color that's best for you. We're going to melt down the wax into a liquid. So what I did was I got a pot and I filled it three quarters of the way full of water and I brought it to a low boil. Then I added my candles to the water. The boiling water will begin to melt the solid wax into a liquid. I started off with my two candles, but then I kind of did an eyeball measurement and I realized that I needed more wax. So I took my third candle and I put that in the pot as well. My advice to you is to melt down a little more wax than you think you need because having extra is better than not having enough. So once my wax had been melted down into a liquid, I pulled out the wick. This is great that these candles come with a wick, that way you don't even have to go out and buy anything else. You just use the one that's already in there. So I transferred this wick over to my bowl and to hold it in place, I got a wooden skewer and I took that excess wick and I wrapped it around the skewer. I did that with the three wicks. The skewers will hold the wick in place as the wax solidifies. Now that my wax is completely melted, it's time to transfer it into my bowl. I got a hot pad and I slowly removed the glass bottle out of the boiling water. You're going to want to be very careful at this point. Make sure you use a hot pad and I put my bowl on top of a placemat just in case the wax spills. The wax, the water, and the glass is all very hot so take precautions because you do not want to get burned. So I just continued pouring the wax into my bowl. I continued pouring the wax into my bowl with the remaining two cylinders of melted wax. Now that the wax has been transferred into my bowl, I'm going to let it solidify for a total of four hours. After four hours, the wax is going to look like this. Smooth, solid, just like a candle should look. At this point, I pulled the wick off of the wooden skewer and I trimmed it down to size with a pair of sharp scissors. That's it, we are completely done. Wasn't that a piece of cake? But oh boy, look at how pretty this candle is. And not only is it gorgeous, we saved ourselves so much money. I don't know if you've priced out large candles like this, especially in decorative bowls, but they can get so expensive. By making our own, we saved a ton of money. We spent $3.99 on the bowl and a total of $3.75 on the wax. So in total, this beautiful candle cost me less than $8. My candle does not have a scent, but if you wanted it to have a scent, you could add some essential oils or you could melt down some already scented wax and use that as well. This is also a great project if you have some random candles hanging around the house or some candlesticks that are broken or you know, like when you have candles and there's like this much wax left, we'll just put it in a heat safe bowl, melt it down and transfer it to another container. This will give your wax a new lease on life.
Another place I love searching through at my thrift store is the glass and the vase aisle. They always have some great treasures. You just have to move things around and find a great piece, which is exactly what I did. I found a glass vase. It's rather large and the shape of the vase is unique and interesting. And the best part was it was only $1.99. That's a no brainer. So I scooped that right up and brought it home. The first thing that I did to this face was I gave it a good washing and made sure it was completely dry. And now we are going to paint it. But before we paint it, we're going to cover the outside of this vase with a plastic grocery bag. And then I'm going to take some blue painter's tape and wrap that around the rim of the vase. We are actually going to be painting the inside of this vase. Now I know that's counterintuitive to what we typically do. We always paint the outside, but today we're gonna to do the inside and I'll show you why in just a minute. So I took my base outside and I sprayed it in some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that the entire inside of the vase was completely covered in the paint and then I let it dry for one hour. All right, so the reasoning behind why we're painting the inside of this vase is because we're going to make a design and put it on the outside. If I wanted to ever take off the design that we're going to be putting on, it would rip some of the paint off, which is not what we want to do. So by painting the inside of the vase, it leaves the outside glass so we can add and take away anything on the outside of this vase without worrying about peeling or chipping the paint. I created a damask design on my Cricut and then I had my Cricut maker cut it out on some removable vinyl. I weeded away the excess vinyl from my damask design. Then I put some transfer tape over the top and then I transferred my design onto the center lower portion of my vase. I'm using removable vinyl so I can use this vase again for another season or holiday Simply by removing the vinyl, I'll be able to have a blank slate to decorate with. An additional detail that I wanted to add to this face was a ribbon right at the top. I created this ribbon a couple videos back. If you remember, I used it on my foyer display table. What I did with this ribbon was I just hot glued two ribbons together to create one unique and custom ribbon. I took some double-sided tape and I added that to the back of the ribbon and then I pressed that to the neck of the vase. I added more double-sided tape along the vase at the top and then I just simply pressed that ribbon to the double-sided tape until it was completely around the neck of the vase. I love the additional detail that this ribbon adds to this vase. The color scheme of the gold and white ribbon ties in with the gold and white overall color scheme that I'm going for in my display. Isn't this container just beautiful? And it was only $1.99. I have a custom piece now that looks so high end, so expensive and what I'm gonna do to this vase, of course, is we're gonna add some flowers because I always add flowers, I love flowers. So I'm gonna take some peonies. I had two bunches that I purchased at Michael's. I bent the stem and I simply added them to the inside of the vase. Super easy, piece of cake, anybody can do this. They are the perfect addition to accompany my newly transformed vase. Now that all of our pieces are transformed, we are going to put them together to create a beautiful display. Now, I don't know if you remember, but we transformed this tray a couple weeks back. Again, it was a thrift flip. We painted it white, added some gold to the nail head trim, and then added a beautiful vinyl decal to the bottom. So this tray is going to be the base of our display. Next, we're going to add this large ginger jar. Oh my goodness, I love this thing. I got it from Home Goods, and I love the gold color. 
it's obviously huge. <laughs> I love all the detailing it has on it. So we're gonna add this to our tray on this side. Then to the opposite side of our ginger jar, we're going to add our vase with the flowers in it. So to give our vase and flowers some height, I'm going to be using a small cake stand. I love using cupcake stands and cake stands to give pieces height. So we're just gonna place this right on top of our cake stand. And then in the center, we're going to add our candle. Now, to give this candle some extra height, instead of using a cupcake or a cake stand this time, we're just gonna be using some marble coasters. These are great because you can stack them. They're thin to begin with, but as you stack them, they get taller and taller, so you can really customize the height that you want. Isn't this display just so pretty? And all I needed to do to create it was to take some thrifted items and transform them. Who knew that a little bowl could grow up to be a candle one day? And the vase for the price is a stunning addition that I can use all year long. You never know what you're gonna find at the thrift store, so keep your eyes and your imagination open because you could easily overlook a treasure that with a little bit of paint, a little creativity could be transformed into a beautiful piece of home decor. I hope you enjoyed doing these thrift flips with me. I hope you got some inspiration or some ideas so you feel like you can easily transform some thrifted pieces too. I appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much for watching.